Good evening, Facebook friends and YouTube followers. This is Rich again, back for your third and final video blog of the night for Saturday, November 29th, 2014, around 8.37 p.m. in Burlington, Massachusetts. Another cold night on tap tonight. Then we're going to go back on a, warm, on a warming trend. 50s tomorrow and Monday get some of the snow melted in Bellarmine, Massachusetts, in the Merrimack Valley before the temperature drops again on Tuesday. Then we'll warm it back up on Wednesday. Then it will be cold again Thursday and Friday. And next Saturday it's going to be warm again, but with a chance of rain showers. Some news to report: the Montreal Canadiens we signed forward Brendan Gallagher to a six-year contract extension. And also, the average Major League Baseball, the minimum um, salary a Major League Baseball player can make in 2015 has been raised from $500,000 to $507,000. They got the $7,000 raise. That's amazing. That's about it on that. And my third and final video blog subject tonight is the personality profile. Tonight's personality profile is Rick Pitino. Rick is one of the most successful men's college basketball coaches in history. He led three t teams, three colleges, to the Final Four NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament. Amazing. Rick was born in New York City, and he grew up in Bayville, New York. He was the captain of his high school basketball team at St. Dominican High School. St. Dominic High School and he was a good basketball player. He played college basketball for the UMass Men for four seasons. The first year he played on the freshman team because back in the back in, up into the early 70s freshmen could not play on the varsity ba basketball team so he had to play on the freshman basketball team and his teammates well with UMass Minutemen were Al Skinner, who became a college basketball coach for Rhode Island and BC, and eventually Al also played in the ABA, and also Mike Flanagan, who was a pitcher, major league pitcher, who pitched for the Orioles and the Blue Jays. He won the 1979 AL Cy Young Award, and he also was on, played for UMass when Julius Irvin, Dr. J, was there, but he they were teammates because he he was on the freshman team and Dr. J was on the varsity team and stuff like that. Rick was not drafted by the NBA or ABA. He was a decent player, but he wasn't you know pro material. He then he started off his college career coaching. He was assistant coach for the University of Hawaii for a couple of years. He actually was interim head coach in the 1975-76 season. Then he went to coach at Syracuse University as an assistant coach. He was the first year for Jim Bo Bohine and stuff like that, so he was assistant coach for him. Rick's first coach head coaching job in the NCAA men's basketball was Boston University and he coached the BU Terrios men's basketball team for five years from 1978 through 1983 and he had he, he like guided the Terriers to success because before he got there the Terriers were on a downswing. I think they only won 17 games in a, like a four-year stretch. But when Patino became coach of them for five years, he brought them to respectability and stuff like that. He won a couple of, of American East Coast of the Year honors, and he led them to the NCAA tournament. And then from 1983 to 1985, Rick Patino landed an assistant coaching job at the New York Knicks for the NBA. He was the assistant coach when UB Brown was the head coach there. In 1985, Rick Pitino left the Knicks as an assistant coach to return to um, college basketball, and he he became coach of the Providence Friars and coached for them for two seasons. He led the Pro Providence Friars to national prominence. He led them to a Final Four in 1987. He won National Coach of the Year in 1987 for college basketball and he won the John Wooden Award in 1987 as well and after he led Providence College to the Final Four 
everybody was calling him um, college, bigger colleges and NBA teams. He decided to go to the New York Knicks to coach the NBA. This was his first NBA coaching job for New York Knicks. He coached for them for two years. He and he led them to playoff appearances, but they got bounced early in the first round. And then he decided with Patino to leave the New York Knicks jobs to return to coaching in college. And he decided to coach Kentucky. Kentucky falling on hard times in the 80s and stuff. They were on probation and stuff. And they were almost rumored to be put on the death penalty because of recruiting violations and stuff like that. And with Patino decide he wanted to do this job and he coached for, for Kentucky University for eight years. He led the Wildcats to three Final Four appearances, one NCAA t title tournament in 1996. He won a lot of SEC Coach of the Year honors and stuff like that and he coached a lot of good players as well and stuff like that and with Patino still wanted a challenge as well he wanted to coach in the NBA again in 1997 he left Kentucky to coach the Boston Celtics the Celtics were the most best NBA team of all time they were a dynasty and stuff like that and they won 16 NBA world championships but in the, in the 90s they fell on some hard times and with Patino wanted to work his magic. He became head coach and he became president of the Boston Celtics. He took the job from Red Auerbach as president of the Boston Celtics. The president of, of that the Boston Celtics is a figurehead position and a lot of diehard Celtics fans were mad about that. Patino coached the Celtics for four years but they had no success. They they never made the playoffs under Patino. They were they had some bad breaks they lost a lot and Patino got frustrated with that one time in a press conference in March of 2000 he just rambled on saying Larry Bird's not walking through that door Kevin McHale's not walking through that door and Robert Parrish is not walking through that door if you expect him to walk through that door they'll be all old and gray I wish we were 90 million dollars under the cap wish we could buy the world but we can't and he would ramble on saying that these players are working their hardest and stuff like that. He also said, mentioned, they, I booed when I heard, I was here when you booed Kaya Stramsky. I heard, I was here when you booed Jim Rice and stuff like that. Patino was frustrated in that. He, he resigned from the Celtics halfway through the 2000, 2001 season, which this was a very disappointment for with Patino. This probably was one of his worst coaching jobs ever and plus in addition I think many college coaches don't make successful NBA coaches and stuff like that I, I didn't think Pestino should have coached the Celtics period because I didn't, didn't think he was not he didn't think he was a pro coach and stuff like that and you know the Celtics didn't do anything until after he left and stuff like that then a couple of during the spring of 2001 he was a college basketball analyst for the CBS March Madness and stuff and then in the summer of 2011 he took a job as the Kentucky men's basketball coach and he's been with the Kentucky program for 14 years and he's he's had success with them he's won many coach of the year awards for Conference USA and the Big East he led he led them to three final fours and including a national championship in 2000 13 and Rick Patino is like one of the few coach is the only coach in history to lead three teams to the final four officially Providence Kentucky and Louisville the other one John Calipari who's who like um, Kentucky and Memphis and UMass to final fours but um, UMass and Memphis they had to vacate the position because they had some de illegal dealings and stuff like that and stuff and that wasn't good and a lot of a lot of coaches have like from NCAA things have 
been part of Rick Patino's family tree for coaching over 30 of his former assistants and players have gone on to coach for college, men's programs, women's programs, and some in the NBA. It's pretty amazing and stuff like that. And also, Rick's hobby is owning full-bred racehorses. Some of them have ran in the Kentucky Derby and stuff, and that's a pretty good hobby. And he also, in 2013, was voted into the Pro Basketball Hall of Fame. His career record in the NCAA, as of right now, 700 wins, 246 losses. That's amazing. And when his total career coaching record in the NBA is a, is a mediocre 192-220. It's never going to coach in the NBA again, I think, Rick Pitino. There was rumors in, like, 2008 that the Dallas Mavericks were going to try to make a run at him to coach the team, but Pitino turned them down. But I, if he, I don't know how he would have worked with Mark Cuban and stuff like that. That would have been, that would have been interesting, but I doubt he would have been successful with the Mavericks, but who knows. And that's about it on Rick Pitino. Love doing these... F video blogs, Facebook friends, and YouTube followers. These will be continuing on for many more weeks, months, years, and stuff like that. All my videos are archived on Facebook and on YouTube beginning in June of 2014 when I started. The first couple of weeks I started, it was just Facebook only exclusive ones, but now this is Facebook and YouTube completely. Tomorrow's subjects will be about Top 10 greatest Toronto Blue Jays pitchers of all time. The classic game show Trivia Trap. And the third and final video blog of the night will be about former New York Giants quarterback Phil Simms, who is a, who's currently the lead and um, color man on NFL games on CBS. And December is going to be a December to remember here. Lots of video blog and stuff like that. I hope to get one out about Julie Brutt in Local 6 soon. Everybody's can't wait for that. And maybe the first of the year, I might have some doing weekly video guests on here. Like a weekly guest. And we could talk about anything and everything. Try to get some big names. Big names. Have a good night, Facebook friends and YouTube followers. Bye now.